Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. If you feel like that you're not prospering and you're not successful, then go back to square one. What have you been thinking about? What is the condition of your mind? Why don't you turn to the person next to you and say, what is the condition of your mind? They're probably thinking, I'm not sure, but I'm probably about to find out. <laughs> thank you, Lord, for the word today. We just so much appreciate you. And thank you for this great conference, for all the beautiful people that have come. And I just want to pray for them that all the word that they've gotten will stick in their life and they'll see it bear good fruit. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Second Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. We're going to go where we started on Thursday night because we always have lots of new people and This is just an anchor scripture in the Bible about the mind and our thoughts. Why do I call all this material the battlefield of the mind? Because there is a battle in our mind between good and evil. If Satan can occupy your thoughts, he can occupy your life. If he can get you to think it, he can get you to do it. I never even had any idea that a lot of my thoughts were from Satan. It just didn't even occur to me. I just thought they were all mine. And, you know, I had let them become mine because I took them and continued to meditate on them. Well, the only way to change that is to know the Word of God. And not just to hear a little bit of it here and there. Not just to park on a church pew and let somebody preach at you for a few minutes once a week. But to study the word, to meditate on the word until it becomes such a part of you that it renews your mind till it teaches you to think differently. Amen. One of my favorite statements that just came out of my heart, but I really like it, is we have to learn how to think like God thinks and we have to learn how to talk like God talks if we want to have what God wants us to have. Our thoughts and our words are extremely important and that's why I teach on them quite a bit. Now, in uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, the Bible says, for the weapons of our warfare are not physical weapons of flesh and blood, so they must be spiritual weapons. They're mighty before God for the overthrow and the destruction of strongholds. Inasmuch are with these weapons We refute arguments and theories and reasonings. I kind of hang on to the word reasoning because I, I feel in my heart today that I need to spend a little bit of time on reasoning. Some of you just spend way too much time trying to figure out stuff that only God knows the answer to and he's not going to give you all the answers because he wants you to trust him, not know everything. Why, God, why? When God win. We really get ourselves messed up thinking that we need to understand everything. So we refute arguments, theories, reasonings, and every proud and lofty thing that exalts itself against the true knowledge of God. So any thought that we have that doesn't agree with this is not a thought that's coming from God. I don't even remember what it was because I got rid of it so quick. But this morning, some dumb thought came in my head about somebody and it just, and I, you know, I just, I said out loud, that is stupid. <laughs> well, you know, the minute I said that, it left. One of the things I want to bring to your attention today is One of the quickest ways to get rid of a thought that you don't want or a train of thoughts that you don't want is to speak out loud. You have to learn how to talk back to the devil. You don't hear him in words. He affects your thinking or your emotions or, or how you feel or something like that. But you can talk back to the devil. Jesus did it. And if he can do it, we can do it. 
In 1 Peter it says, resist the devil at his onset. The minute that he begins to attack you. That's why when I realized that that thought was in my mind, and the Holy Spirit will help us with that. You can pray that the Holy Spirit will make you aware when there's something in your mind that is ungodly. You may have been unaware for a lot of years, and it may take a little while to, to get practiced at that, but I, you know, we can get to the point where we just really don't think anything stupid for very long because we begin to feel uncomfortable in spirit when we do. That's why the minute that dumb thought, and I'm, I'm glad now, I can't even remember what it was. That's how quick I recognized it and got rid of it. That's why I said out loud, it is stupid. Because when the devil said something to Jesus, Jesus said back to him. It is written, and he would quote him a scripture. That's why we need to know the word of God. Your spirit, your soul needs to be like an encyclopedia of the word of God. I mean, you need to know it to the point, we need to know it to the point where as soon as we hear a lie or something that doesn't agree with God, whether it's coming from a person at you or whether it's just the enemy implanting something in your mind, the minute that we recognize it, we can resist the devil at his onset. The only way that demonic thoughts become yours is if you take them and meditate on them over and over until they become part of you. Well, likewise, the only way God's Word is going to really be yours is if you take it and meditate on it over and over and over until it becomes part of you. And we lead every thought captive unto the obedience of Christ. Who leads those thoughts away captive? We do. Romans 13, 14. But clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. What does that mean? It means put on the nature of Christ. And make no provision for indulging the flesh. Now look what the Amplified says about how we make a provision for the flesh. Put a stop to thinking about the evil cravings of your physical nature in order to gratify its desires and its lusts. So if we think about something long enough, we're likely to do it. If you think about what somebody has done to you that has hurt you for a long time and you get in their presence, it's going to be next to impossible for you to treat them with love. It may even be difficult for you to keep your mouth shut and not tell them off. <laughs> if you think about whatever your favorite dessert is long enough, you're more than likely going to go get it. Where the mind goes, the man follows, and this scripture proves that. If you want to overcome the evil cravings of your physical nature, and I want to overcome mine, then we have to put a stop to thinking about those things. Now, how many of you have hang-ups in your life that you would like to get over? All right. Can I tell you a little secret? Stop thinking all the time that you're in bondage and start thinking I'm free from that. Yeah. Don't sit around and think, oh, I've got such a problem with that. I have such a hang up with that. Get together with your friends. I've got such a hang up with this. This is such a bondage in my life. I just don't know if I'll ever get free. I'm addicted. I'm addicted. I'm addicted. No, you need to say, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free, I'm dead to that, I am free. And I know for people who have never heard this kind of thing, it sounds like some kind of mind control, goofy, you know, new age type weird thing. But everything I'm saying to you, I can prove it in the Word of God. I'm not making this stuff up. It's all in the Bible. Romans 6, how can you remain in sin when you died with Christ when he died and were raised with him when he was raised? And then it goes through a lot of other things. It says to consider yourself dead to sin. So let me just ask you a question. How do you consider yourself? Do you consider yourself still in bondage? 
Now, you know, I mean, obviously some of you do. You consider yourself dead to sin? Or do you think about, oh, I got a problem with this. I got a problem with that. Now, I'm not saying that we ignore our problems. I think we need to pray about those things between us and God. If you need to get a word of counsel, you can get that. If you need prayer, you can get that. But I'm talking about in your riding in the car to work thinking, in your taking a shower in the morning thinking, in your laying in bed at night thinking. How are you thinking? What is going on inside of you? You know what? Whatever is going on inside of you is preparing you for action. If you think all the time, I'm in bondage, I'm in bondage, then I can just tell you, you're not ever going to get out of it. And so what we do is we think wrong, we talk wrong, and then we want a miracle. <laughs> we want to be delivered. We wait for the next miracle worker to come to town that can pray for us and break this stuff off of us. I'm in such bondage. I'm in such bondage. Why don't you just start by faith? And it's, it's faith. Faith. Calleth those things that be not as though they are. Faith. Faith agrees verbally with God. You may not have it in reality yet, but the Bible says that it, it, it will be yours. So you start saying, I'm free. I'm free from that. And you are. Spiritually, you are free. Every freedom that you need is in your spirit. You are totally, completely delivered from every kind of bondage. It's just still being worked out in your soul and in your reality. So once again, put a stop to thinking. How many of you are with me here today? Anybody believe that might make a big change in your life? All right, now we're going to take a few minutes here and talk about the importance of meditating on the Word of God. And, and I want you to really listen to this because if you don't learn to do it, the Word is never become, going to become any more than head knowledge to you. And it needs to be revelation. You don't need information. You need revelation. Once something becomes revelation to you, then it's something that becomes a part of you and nobody can take it away from you. I mean, you would never convince me that God doesn't love me. I don't care what kind of circumstance I had. I could never be convinced of that anymore because I have at least meditated one or two or three million times on God loves me. And I remember when I did not believe that and I would stand and look at myself in the mirror and say, God loves you. God loves you. A woman sent me a testimony the other day and she said, all my life I thought I was ugly. I thought I was a failure. I'd been hurt by a couple different men. My first husband left me for a 17-year-old woman. I married another guy. I was married to him for a long time. And then he did some terrible things. And so everything that happened to me just kept convincing me over and over that I was no good. And she said, I remember walking by the mirror and thinking, I'm so ugly. I'm so ugly. And she went to some classes at our inner city church in St. Louis. And they told her there to go and look at herself in the mirror and say, you're beautiful, God loves you. And she said, I started doing that. And now she is completely free, likes herself, doesn't feel that way about herself anymore. Listen to me. No matter what the Word of God says, if you don't believe it, it's not going to ever be real for you. I can believe it, but if you don't believe it, it's not going to work for you. That's why I tell you over and over and over and over and over and over, and your pastors tell you over and over, and it's in books, and it's on CDs, and it's in DVDs, and it's on TV, and it's in your Bible. So hopefully one of these days, it'll go from here to, oh. Amen. And you know, sometimes we get proud of ourselves. We think, oh, I know that. I've got that underlined. <laughs> we get so proud of what we know, but we all need to be honest and say, I don't know anything if it's not working in my life. Mark 4, 24. 
And he said to them, be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study, everybody say thought and study. That you give to the truth that you hear will be the measure of virtue, which is another word for power, and knowledge that comes back to you, and more besides will be given to you who hear. So he's saying when you hear the truth, if you want that truth to have power in your life, however much you think about it and study it is what's going to come back to you. We jump from subject to subject too fast. You've heard me teach on one thing now for four days, and that's one of the reasons why most of the time I will stick with a subject and come at it from four different ways in my conferences. Because one pass at us doesn't get it. But chances are, by this time next week, you may have heard teaching on 10 different subjects. And I'm not saying that that's bad, but I will tell you this. When one hits you that you know, man, I really need this, you better start making some notes and get your Bible out. And that's the thing you want to continue to study and meditate on if you want it to get down deep on the inside of you. So it says, the measure of thought and study that you give to the truth that you hear. Well, what about if what you're hearing is not the truth? <laughs> what about if we meditate on the lies, the deceptions, that are in our mind. What about if there are strongholds in our mind and we never even knew anything about the importance of our thoughts? I lived a lot of years with my mind full of lies and I didn't even know they were there. And I was a Christian who loved God. I was saved. I believe I would have gone to heaven if I would have died, but I can tell you one thing, I had a pitiful life. And I don't think that gives God glory. I don't believe it glorifies God if we go to church every week and we have pitiful lives. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't go to church. Even if our life is pitiful, we should go because that's the only place we're going to get help. But we don't want to stay that way. And it was because I was meditating on all the wrong things. And a lot of it got started when I was little. I'll never, you know, my, my dad would say to me over and over, you will never amount to anything. You will never amount to anything. You will never amount to anything. And because he was abusing me, at one point in my life, I started thinking, what is wrong with me? that he wants to do this to me because I was pretty sure it wasn't happening to all the other people that I knew. And I cannot even tell you how many years that lying record played in my head, what is wrong with me? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? And then people, because my personality was a little bit goofy and weird, even people would say to me sometimes, what is wrong with you? I remember after Dave and I were married just a few weeks, he looked at me and said, what is wrong with you? And I'm thinking, oh. <laughs> you know, we have such a tendency to compare ourselves with other people. And we assume if we're not like them, something is wrong with us. Well, that's a lie. But if you meditate on that, then it becomes yours. It becomes your reality. And you take that in to yourself. So whatever you meditate on, be it the word of God or the lies of Satan or wrong things that people have said to you, what are some of the things that your parents or other people that you wanted love from said to you maybe 20 years ago that still is like a broken record playing on the inside of you? You can get rid of that by beginning to think and speak what God says about you. You have no idea how wonderful, how powerful, how talented, how anointed, how special you are. I mean, it just makes me want to get up and run the building when I think about what all God has said about us and His Word. Oh, my goodness. It's just so wonderful. Joshua 1 and 8. Now, you know, God had called Joshua to take the place of Moses and lead the Israelites into the promised land. And he gave him some instructions about not being afraid. But here's one of the things that he says in verse 8 that is so important. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it. And the word meditate means to roll over and over in your mind and to mutter under your breath shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe and do. You see, we only do 
after it's in our mind. Where the mind goes, the man follows. If we're only going to go hear the word in church and never meditate on it and really let it become part of us, then chances are you'll never do it. Your Bible might look like a coloring book, but you're still not living the kind of life that you should be living. Meditate on it day and night that you may observe and do according to all that's written in it, for then... You shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. What a wonderful scripture that is. If you feel like that you're not prospering and you're not successful, then go back to square one. What have you been thinking about? What is the condition of your mind? How many of you feel like God's got your number this morning? Now, one more. Proverbs 4.20. My son, attend to my words. Consent and submit to my sayings. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart. For they are life to those who find them, healing and health to all of their flesh. Now, Listen to this. There's a lot of different translations of the Bible. And a, and a man named Isaac Leeser says this. The Hebrew word for health in verse 22 is medicine. God's word is medicine to all of our flesh. For example, Exodus 15, 26 could read, I am the Lord your physician. The medicine that I prescribe is my word. Now look, I've got a couple of something up here, a couple of Tylenol or Advil or something. I just asked somebody to give me a couple of things that could stop a headache. Now, there's ability and inherent power in these pills to stop a headache or help a backache or whatever. If you take blood pressure medicine, there's inherent power in it to lower your blood pressure. On and on and on. We know all the different stuff. Okay, now, if I have a headache and I just kind of lay this on my head. <laughs> come on, how many of you know where I'm going? Well, I have the aspirin, <laughs> but I didn't take it. I didn't swallow it and let it become part of me so it couldn't do its work. Well, the Word of God is medicine for your soul. It's medicine for your flesh. It's medicine for your mind. For years, I've had my faith extended, and I pray about this on a regular basis, and this is one of the things I'm telling God I'm not going to give up. Psalm 107.20 says he sends his word and heals them and delivers them from the pit and from destruction. Well, what do you think is happening when you hear the word, whether it's from me or somebody else that you feel like really you can connect with, and your life changes? He's sending his word, and his word is healing you. You know why? Because the word of God has inherent power in it. Just like those aspirin has power in them to do a certain job, his word has power in it to deliver, to change, to set free, to renew the mind, to heal our wounded emotions, to give us beauty for ashes, and to heal us physically. And I want to see God's anointing become so strong on His Word that we will see even people physically healed just while they're receiving the Word of God. And I think if we would approach the Word like that, I'm going today to take my medicine. And I'm going to keep taking my medicine and keep taking my medicine till it relieves all of my symptoms. Come on, you don't, you don't take one pill when you're real sick. 
I mean, if you've got an infection, they give you antibiotics for X number of days, you take them three times a day. Well, what happens if you've got some kind of a demonic spiritual infection? Would, would you take your medicine three times a day for 10 days and see what would happen? And if that didn't work, would you go back to the doctor and get your prescription renewed and take it again and again and again? We have more faith in pills than we do the Word of God sometimes. I am telling you that the Word of God has healed my soul. It has renewed my mind. It has healed me physically. The Word of God is like taking a happy pill. Woo, glory. Some of you got happy pills, but I'm telling you what, you got a big happy pill right there. Well, I believe that today's teaching has helped you understand how to meditate on God's Word. It is the key to knowing His perfect will for your life. You know, the Bible says in Joshua 1 and 8, that when we meditate on the Word of God, we have wisdom, we make better decisions, we deal wisely, and it brings prosperity and success into all areas of our life. Extreme poverty is a huge problem in this area just outside of Hyderabad, India. But there are two young girls that we want to tell you about. Their names are Bhavana and Nandini, and they are facing something that is so difficult. The fact is, they are girls, and that's basically all it takes. My name is Nandini, I'm studying in fourth class. I have nine years old. My name is Priya Bhavana, I'm studying in ninth class. Uh, I, I am uh, 14 years old. 14 years old. What kind of problems are, are your family facing? My father is not there in my home. He is swimming outside. I have a lot of pain. 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 God is taking care of you. Yes, uh, God is taking care about me in all my uh, necessities and He is giving me very good help. Then what do you like to do together? Uh, we will pray together every day and we will play every day. Whenever we have time, we'll make funny jokes, we'll sit, uh, study, and we'll learn about God. What does it mean to you when you come here to visit and you see your daughters are happy? As I'm sure you know, there are many parts of the world where simply being born a girl and not a boy makes life very difficult. India is one of those places. Together we can make a difference, and we are. The girls that you see behind me are part of our Hand of Hope sponsored children's home. And we're able to not only keep them in a safe place, an environment that is loving, but to let them know that what society says about them is not true, that it's what God says about them that matters. They are valuable and they are loved. You are helping make this possible. Don't ever look at a situation and think it's too big to make a change. Together, we are making a change, and we thank you for being part of it. In het leven lopen we hier en daar butsen en schrammen op. Sponsor over. Maar sommige beschadigingen kunnen het leven volledig lam leggen. Hoe overwin je woede en bitterheid? Lees het boek van Joyce Meyer. 
Doe jezelf een plezier. Vergeef en start bevrijd aan je toekomst. Bestel je boek. Doe jezelf een plezier. Vergeef. Via joyce-meijer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Al gezien? Frisse impulsen. Nu bij Joyce Meijer Nederlands op Facebook.